Hello everyone, welcome back to Geeks Cant with World of Game Design. I'm your host, Zach, and I'm here with another creator interview about a live Kickstarter. Um, the creator I'm with today is Patrick. Patrick, welcome back to the show. Hey, nice to be here, on, uh, here again. Awesome. So you are um, you're the head of our the current head of our Dungeon Epics team at World of Game Design, and you have this weird... I, I shouldn't say weird. It's it's a it's a different sort of way of doing a dungeon delve. Um, and you took yeah. it to Kickstarter last week. How's that going for you? It's going amazing. It's going really, really good. I mean, it was time for Thine Quest and physical products. So I thought, what nice idea could we do? And uh, what uh, interesting physical product can I come up with? And it came, I came up with that interesting dungeon crawl. Yeah, it's very interesting. So it's got... Um, at its base, right, it's it's kind of, I was going to say standard, it's not necessarily that, but it's got these standard tiles that have different hallways and corridors and rooms of different sorts yeah. that you, you kind of draw and randomly lay out as you move through the dungeon. Um, I think that sort of like random dungeon generator, we see a lot of that sort of presentation. Maybe not yeah. this way where it's like playing card material and... You're, it's more something that you can shuffle easy and there's a lot more cards um but we do what we don't see is the thing that you kind of came up with which is the idea that these are themed experiences that there's yeah. a scenario that you're playing through and it's still random can you talk about that a little bit yeah so uh i combined several ideas from several games so for example uh the base ideas from haunted horse on the hill where you kind of explore that mansion and you find out new rooms and you place them and you can add those uh, doors together and build them up and look for stuff. And another game is um, Claustrophobia, where you basically also explore more kind of a dungeon and the other player is kind of playing the monsters and doing bad stuff to uh, prevent you from achieving your goal. And I, I always liked Claustrophobia for that regard. They were short, nice and short scenarios. And I thought, how could I com could combine those two? And basically what I came up with is that we have a few uh, base tiles and a lot of unique rooms. And each room comes with its own random table. And what makes that random table special is that the last entry is always unique to the scenario you chose at the beginning. So for example, if you, uh, we have three, we go with three different um, storylines for the beginning, um, uh, demon cult, uh, long gone inventor, and, and for example, an orc stronghold. And the first um, entries are kind of like standard to the room. For example, uh, if you have uh, a kitchen, you find uh, someone cooking there or uh, stuff like that. And if you go for, a, uh, if you roll a high enough number, it's a different event for it is specific to each uh, scenario. So for example, the longer an inventor has a machine there producing food or mm -hmm. the Orc Stronghold has a lot of beer stack there. I, I, I don't uh, know what I c actually came up with. There are quite a few rooms, that's why. But kind of like that regard. So always have something different. Yeah, that's, that's what's cool about it is that, so you drew inspiration. It's still obviously something that you can, that's meant to be played with D&D uh, &D or, or some, yep. some sort of game like that, an RPG, right? But yep. you took a lot of inspiration from these board games and the thing that I like about it is that it feels like a somewhat unique integration. The idea that you're yeah. laying out dungeon tiles and typically then it would be up to the GM to determine what is in those dungeons or uh, there would be just like a, a book or a booklet that would say, hey, this tile has this and they would reference yeah. that. You go a step further and say, you still have the booklet, but now each tile has a table and that table changes based off of the 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 theme or the scenario that you're playing through. Yeah, I, li I like randomness. And uh, that's really nice. That's a really nice way of always having a little bit. Uh, nobody knows what, what's coming up, not even DDM. And it gives us the opportunity to even combine several decks into a larger deck. Uh, because even if you explore the same room twice, it doesn't mean you have the same event. Yeah. And the other cool thing about it, right, is that you pulled out all of the encounters and traps and things like that. And said okay well the dungeon is going to present or the rooms are going to present you know just just encounter scenarios or descriptions of things but whether that is going to result in a combat or there's going to be a trap in here a puzzle in here or whatever or a very difficult encounter you know combat yeah. all those things are still in the hands of the gm right so so go ahead 
so, some rooms will still provide uh, some basic stuff. So for example, we have a riddled vault. There will always be uh, a riddle or so, some kind of like that. But uh, what's inside the room is determined by uh, the table example. For example, uh, there is a riddle that's harder, or maybe there's a trap. And the next step basically is that each card is double printed. On one side you have the room, on the other side you have an icon for the GM card. And the GM card can always say like, you explore the new room, I play one or multiple cards from my hand, and now you have two monsters charging in from an unopened door, or you activate a trap, or the terrain is shifting. For example, magical mist wafts through the dungeon tile in this in this room. Stuff like that. Yeah, so let's dive into that a little bit more. So. Um... Because I think that's interesting, making sure we know how it works. So when you're starting, when you first start up your dungeon, the game master is going to, you know, all the cards have one side that's the game master icons, right? With different icons yeah. or traps or different levels of encounters or puzzles. The other side is going to have the rooms. And so the start of the game, the game master is going to pull out, you know, a select number of cards to build yeah. their deck. And by default, that means that those rooms aren't going to be in the dungeon, yeah. right? Um, we, we're going for the full randomness here. The uh, dungeon master, make, after he takes every card he needs for, uh, for his setup, he can obviously look at what rooms he picks, but the players don't know. They only see the dungeon uh, GGM card side, which for them doesn't do anything. So yeah. that's basically the back side of the card for them. And the cool so thing- So they about, don't know which rooms are out. Yeah, yeah. And the cool thing about that, what I really like is that um, it, you found a way to make it affordable, right? By using both sides of the cards, yeah. um, you you are able to significantly increase, for all intents and purposes, double the amount of cards you can provide for rooms and maps and things, right? So yeah. um, this is a very utilitarian uh, approach to, to... Yeah, that was kind of the idea behind. We obviously... You know, would love to have great big tiles where I can put minis on, but those are, you know, they are expensive. They take up a lot of space and we have a lot of tiles. So your table space is also limited. So, you know, uh, these smaller cards where you can still perfectly fit meeples and small cubes and stuff also fit a, a nice purpose for that regard in my eyes. Yeah. So these cards are two and a half inches wide. Roughly, that means I think that each square is about a half inch square or so. Uh, so like you say, you can still put cubes or, or meeples or whatever on them. But yeah. if, also, if you're just playing the theater of the mind game, but you still want to do the dungeon crawl, you can put all your characters in the hallway still. Um, yeah. You can still put all your PCs in a room. You can still note where your characters are. Um, but yeah, it just, the big complaint that I see, um, you know, when I talk to folks, different conventions and whatnot that, you know, maybe have dungeon craft or uh, dwarven forge terrain, things like that. Um, yeah. is it's just cumbersome, right? It's cool when you're at your home and when you can set it up and when you're going to play for hours and hours. But when you're sitting down at a convention or you're, you're, you're going to your game store to play or whatever, like you're not going to take all of your Dwarven Forge stuff there very often. And yeah. so yeah. there's got to be a way that's both affordable and very uh, compact and portable uh, to yeah. do this sort of thing. I mean... Even the ones that really like those big tiles, they have still their option of um, getting the digital uh, pledge goal and just printing it out themselves. Yeah, you so can the scale them up. Too. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. all tiles will be high resolution, and they you won't you can print them to basically any size you want. Yeah. So like, okay. So let's let's last thing here. You're finishing up on a tabletop version of it. So like a, t a like a virtual tabletop simulator yep. version of this, so people could try out. I think that's awesome. Um, and uh, I can't wait to show that off. I, I saw a preview of it today, and yeah. um, it's looking really good. So, Yeah, so basically, uh, I want to provide the people, because it is a bit of a, as you said, unique mechanic. And so while we don't want to flood the uh, Kickstarter page with all that information up front, we still want to provide the people with something that can get a feeling for how it plays, you know. And I think Tabletop Simulator really offers a, a good way to demonstrate a, a base test deck um, and I'm currently in the making of scripting a bit so that you can just push some buttons and all tabletop simulator just is a setup so you don't need to shovel the tiles yourself and stuff like that and it will always be random without any mistake. Yeah, that's rad. Cool. Uh, so let's see. So you still got several days left on your project. Um, you're at 3,500, so you're pushing through stretch goals. Some of those stretch goals are adding additional tiles, additional cards to the deck. 
um, among other things. I think you're also uh, gearing up for, um, I think the adventures are built for, or the scenarios are built for tier one and tier two play. Yeah. And now we're eyeing uh, uh, tier three play as well. Um, so there's going to be a lot of options for that yeah. that book. It's going to be a quite extensive zine accompanying this. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, I, I'm not, I, I'm still working out the process of how to make the scaling perfect, but I, I think there there is definitely a way for it. And um, while, for example, D and D is the perp uh, the basis of what I build it on, it I think it would be easily adopted to anything else, and it's probably more system neutral than D and D specific. Yeah, I think so. Absolutely. Cool. Well, Patrick, thanks a lot for hopping on again. Uh, congratulations on initial success and good luck yeah, with the rest you. of the campaign. Thank you. Thank you.